Welcome to worship at Center Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you chose today to worship with us. It's uh, Sunday, November 22nd, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And before we get into worship, I just have uh, several announcements to, to um, go over with y'all. Um, there is an annual meeting today following the in-person worship service. So if you'd like to attend that, um, we should be wrapping up with worship around uh, 1130. Uh, so I encourage you to come a little bit before then. Um, today is also the day that the Presbyterian Women's Association is collecting their thank offering, which is used to support um, mission work in the U.S. and abroad. So if you would, uh, please you know, bring a donation into church uh, later this week, and we'll make sure it gets to the, the PWA. Uh, we have a couple more uh, joint hands giving tree tags that we're trying to give out. Um, so if you can, stop by the church and sign up for one, and uh, then you can get some gifts for uh, a needy family this year. Our mission committee is encouraging people to celebrate Advent by doing a reverse Advent calendar. Each day in Advent, there will be a specific non-perishable food item that you'll be uh, asked to add to, uh, to uh, your own collection box at home. And by Christmas Day, you'll have a, a full box of food that you can bring to church, and all the donations uh, will uh, will then take and and uh, use them to to feed uh, hungry people in in our area. Uh, there's a Thanksgiving service at New Hope UCC in Landisburg on Thursday at 7 p.m. So we invite you to join our UCC friends for a service of gratitude that day. Last Sunday was Stewardship Sunday, and we um, did get pledge cards from a lot of y'all, um, but there were uh, several families that uh, were missing, so we would love to, to get those from you. We, we need that um, pink slip and one of those blue slips from you filled out. And uh, lastly, I just wanted to uh, remind you that there's lots of other announcements as well, too many for me to go over, actually. So um, please read through the bulletin and just look at all the rest. So, friends, let us now turn our minds and hearts to the Lord in worship. Would you join me in the reading of our call to worship? Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Let us worship God. Now join us in singing our first hymn, Come Ye Thankful People, Come.
Friends, scripture tells us that we are all like sheep who have gone astray. All of us have turned from God and gone our own way. So let us return to our shepherd who will heal us, forgive us, and care for us. Join me in the reading of our prayer of confession. Master, Savior, Shepherd, Messiah, we know you by many names, Lord. Your presence fills our lives. All that we are and all that we have comes from you. All that you do declares your love for us. Yet when trouble comes, when adversity plagues us, we wonder where you are, even wonder who you are. How quickly we forget that you are always with us. Dispel our gloom and despair. Change our garments of darkness into robes of dazzling light. Spread your table before us and feed us from your hand. Lead us in the paths of righteousness, for it is in your name that we pray. Amen. The Lord our God says, I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak. Indeed, the Lord is good. God's love and mercy are forever. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven through Christ. Be at peace. Glory to, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever, world without end. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. If you're worshiping today with, uh, with any brothers and sisters, please share a sign of peace with each other. So now, siblings in Christ, join me as I read our prayer of illumination. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, and prepare our hearts to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that, hearing, we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put his, work, God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him, and has made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And now for our second scripture reading, we'll be reading Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16 and 20 through 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel should be their pasture. When, when they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture for the mountains of, on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of their sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost and will bring back the strayed, and, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, Thus says the Lord God to them, 
I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder, and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between ship between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will feed them. He will feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is God's word for us this morning. Sometimes when I'm dreaming, or if I close my eyes and push aside the sights, sounds, and smell of this foreign land that has become all too familiar, I can remember my real home. Gosh, it was decades ago now, but in those moments, it feels like just yesterday. I was walking through my family's barley field, feeling the heads brush up against me as they they swayed in the wind. I remember the feel of our grapes in between my toes as we trampled out the juice to make for my grandfather's famous wine, the best in all Jerusalem. I remember the sound of the marketplace, kids running and playing, merchants um, and buyers haggling over prices, sheep bleeding as they prepared to be sold. I remember the warmth of our house when our family would gather to celebrate the Sabbath over a warm meal. Gosh, life was so good. Granted, I I knew that we were some of the lucky ones. My, My father was a wealthy landowner, and we were much better off than most. Our soil was rich and fertile, and our springs seemed to never run dry. It's funny how naive I was, how naive we all were. We thought we were God's chosen people, and, and we were, but we thought it meant something else. From when I was a small boy, I heard the stories of our forefathers, Abraham and Jacob, and, and how God made a, a special covenant with their descendants, promising to be their God, and to bless them with lush land and numerous offspring if they would follow and obey him. We heard the stories of Moses and Aaron, Aaron and Miriam, and, and how God used them to lead his people, my people, the Israelites, out of slavery in Egypt into the land that he promised. My favorite stories, though, were of King David. Oh, what a great king he was. God took him from the fields where he was a faithful shepherd over his flock and made him into a great shepherd over the flock of all of Israel. He was our greatest and most most faithful king. God, um, He faithfully loved God, and, and he loved his people with his whole heart. Because he was so faithful of a shepherd, God made a covenant with him and with his family uh, that there would always be one of them to rule over Israel. And his descendants would um, would make a home, a, a temple for God among his people. And he did. Now, I, I know that we had our ups and downs as God's people. There, there were lots of times, that um, hard times that we faced together. And a lot of time we turned away from God and and earned rightful punishment, but God always delivered us in the end. So when these Assyrians came on the scene, as as numerous as sand on the seashore and as fierce as a mother bear stripped of of her cubs, my people, we were all scared, but God kept us safe. So then when the Babylonians came, who were just as fierce and powerful as the Assyrians, and they wanted to take take us over, I knew that we were going to be okay. We all did. By then we had figured it out. We were God's people. We had God's temple here. This was God's land. Sure, we weren't perfect. The wealthy and powerful were taking advantage of the weak, and, and our leaders were often more concerned about lining their own pockets than caring for the people. And I'll admit, our our worship was more about routine than it was about the heart. But none of us thought it really mattered. Even if we turned our backs completely on, on our covenant with God, God surely never would. 
But then the unthinkable happened. We rose up in rebellion against these Babylonians again and again. And again and again we were defeated. Each time they took more and more of my people from our homes and forced us to to move uh, towards Babylon, to live in and and repair some ruins in a God-forsaken corner of it. What I wouldn't give to see my fields one more time or to taste the sweetness of my own water. Looking back on it, I know we were wrong. I know that we took for granted God's love and, and didn't live as he had called us to. But haven't we suffered enough? For years we've been stuck here in in this foreign land, subjects to the king of Babylon. My own children are forgetting what their real home is like. And even worse, my grandchildren are starting to talk and act like like one of, of these people who subjugate us. The Babylonians look down on us, calling us backwards. They, they force their foreign culture and language and gods on us. But even worse than all this is having to see my own family starting to become like them. Lord, will I ever see my home again? I know we did wrong. I know we betrayed our covenant with you. But will our punishment ever be enough? Even though we have broken our promises to you and have forgotten you, will you do the same to us? Lord, we are not worthy of your mercy, but I pray that you remain faithful to your promises nonetheless. The story we just heard tried to capture the agony that God's people likely felt during the time of of Ezekiel's ministry. Ezekiel was a prophet to God whose ministry uh, was to the people of uh, of, of Judea during the Babylonian exile. In several waves during the early 500s BC, uh, the Babylonians uh, continually conquered and reconquered Judah, each time taking more and more of their wealth and the best of their citizens to Babylon. And eventually, in 586 BC, they put an end to Judah once and for all and destroyed Jerusalem, tore down its walls and palaces, and even leveled God's temple. For 70 years, a remnant of Judah lived in the backwaters of Babylon, trying to help one another survive and praying that God would one day forgive them and send them home. Ezekiel sums up how they all felt after these years of oppression in Babylon when he says, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Much of the early chapters of Ezekiel is a scathing rebuke of Israel for their turning from God. But when all hope feels lost and God's forgiveness and redemption seems unlikely, God suddenly changes his tone and gives his people this great message of hope that we read in Ezekiel 34, declaring their rescue and salvation. After reprimanding the leaders of or shepherds of Israel who who failed um, and took advantage of their own people, Ezekiel declares, For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. Friends, anytime you hear a prophet say, For thus says the Lord God, what he is uh, really saying is not only are these um, these words um, God's words and not the words of the prophet, But he's also saying, I, God, am saying this. You can believe that it's true. It's God's way of making a promise to his people. So God promises that even though the shepherds have a point that he's appointed have failed, God would shepherd them himself. Friends, all ancient Israelites would have known that sheep were a notoriously helpless animal. They were constantly wandering off and getting lost. They couldn't even find their way back to their own pen, even if they could see it. 
They were totally relying on their shepherd to protect them, lead them to good food and water, and um, tend to them when they were sick or injured. Each night, uh, the shepherd would lead them back to their pen, checking each one diligently for, for injuries or sickness, and tend to any wounds or, or sickness that he found. And, and then he would watch over them as they rested and, and keep them safe for whatever predators might be looking for an easy meal. I'm sure that the people of Judah felt like sheep while in Babylon, lost, vulnerable, in need of nourishment. Ezekiel declares to them the good news that God himself will be their shepherd. God will lead them to places of abundance and safety and will mend their wounds. This day, God was making them a promise to bring together his lost flock and lead them back to their home once more. Then God doubles down on this promise, saying that he will bring his servant David, who was known as the most faithful uh, shepherd of God's people, to feed them and, and to be their shepherd. And he, he makes his, intentional, his intentions crystal clear to them by saying, And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. When it seemed like all hope was lost, when it seemed like God had finally given up on his people, when it seemed like God's promises might finally get broken, Ezekiel gives this amazing good news to, to his people, and God assures them that it will come true. I wonder in this moment if the people of Judah believed him. Had things gotten so bad that they gave up on hope that God could, could or would redeem them still? Had their suffering become so familiar that they could see no other way of life? Does this sound familiar to you? Do you sometimes feel like a stranger in a lost land, in a hostile land, uh, even when you live at home? Friends, there will come a day for all of us when we will feel as they felt. And maybe today is that day for you. Maybe like the Israelites, your pain will be self-inflicted because of the many mistakes that you've made. Maybe your pain comes from unfortunate circumstances that are beyond your control. Maybe your pain comes from a system rigged against you that just keeps your feet stuck in the mud. Whatever the cause, one day or another, you too will feel like a sheep that one day looks up and realizes that uh, you're alone in a hostile environment and hoping that your shepherd will come and find you and bring you home. I'm here today, like, like Ezekiel, to say that God is the one who keeps his promises to us. Through Ezekiel, God promised to be their shepherd and deliver them to their land. God kept this promise. After 70 years in Babylon, the people of Israel were gathered back to their homeland. And in due time, God sent his son, Jesus, the son of David, rightful king of Israel, to be their shepherd. This is what we claim um, starting next week in Advent, that our shepherd is coming, the one who will save us, heal us, and lead us home. Jesus is our good shepherd. In John 10, 15, Jesus, our protector, says that he will lay down his life for the sheep. And indeed he did. Jesus, our healer, in Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And indeed, he does. And in John 14, Jesus, our guide, says that he is going to heaven to prepare a place for us in, in his Father's house. Jesus is leading us to his true home, to our true home, and indeed, he will. Friends, Hear this good news said by Ezekiel and, and echoed, echoed throughout all of Scripture. The Lord is our shepherd. The shepherd is fighting for us to keep us safe from our enemies. The shepherd leads us to places of abundance and peace. The shepherd knows the pain that we carry and, and works to heal it. The shepherd is leading us home. When you find yourself in hostile territory, or when you are in a pit of despair full of regret from the mistakes 
that you've made that cannot be undone, or when your hope in life has been taken from you, always remember that the Lord promises to be your shepherd, and God is your promise keeper. Amen. Friends, would you join us in singing our next hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. Sisters and brothers, would you join me in saying what we believe about our Lord and using the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, on this week where we are all remembering what we have to be thankful for, I invite you this morning to remember who we are thanking. All of us have been blessed in, in countless ways. And as Christians, we claim, as, um, we claim God as the one who is the, the source of all these blessings. So let us thank the Lord together and dedicate the gifts that are given to him this morning. Join me in prayer. God, whose giving knows no bounds. Your word teaches us to give thanks in all circumstances. Today, we take that instruction to heart in the hopes that in doing so, we will more readily express our gratitude every day. No matter where we find ourselves on Thursday, around a table with family, alone in front of our TV, or at work when others are at rest, we stop to acknowledge the blessings of this life in the myriad of forms they take. We thank you, Lord of all, for the beauty of the earth and all the resources we enjoy from creation. Make us careful and humble stewards of the planet we too often neglect and abuse. We thank you, God of mercy, for the abundance of forgiveness extended to us by you and others. Help us to forgive as we have been forgiven, trusting in the unity won for us in Christ. We thank you, Holy Comforter, for the hope of faith that calls us forward. Show us the promised good future you have for us and grant for us the courage to stay on the way when uh, we are afraid and uncertain. 
We thank you, Triune God, for the gift of, of community in whatever way it comes to us, by blood or, or choice, intention or accident, large or small, next door or around the globe. Reveal to us the people who call us, um, who, who call us to love and be loved. Um, by by all of us flawed, beautiful, uh, and redeemed through your grace. We thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in all circumstances, for all blessings wrestled and unexpected, complicated and lovely, overflowing and abundant, today and every day. In our gratitude, we give to you uh, these offerings of, of our praise and our tithes. May you use them and, and all that we are to bring you glory. Amen. Friends, as we are getting ready to um, to bring to the Lord in, in prayer our, our burdens this week, I, I w- want to invite you to remember um, several different prayer requests. Um, please be reading through your, your bulletin and the prayer concerns there and, and be lifting up your sisters and brothers in Christ in prayer. Um, please also be praying for the people who will be serving as our newest officers in uh, 2021, um, that God would, would bless their service to our church. And uh, let us continue to pray for all those in our, in our community and nation and world who are struggling because of the, the coronavirus. So let us turn to our Lord in prayer. Good Shepherd, We want to remember this day and always that you are our shepherd. You are the one who always has and always will take care of us. You will never truly abandon or forsake us, even when we fail again and again or drift further and further from you. Help us to hear your voice calling for us when we we have wandered astray so we may return to you. And when we are in your presence, take away all of the fear that we carry. In in your presence, remind us that we have no enemies to be afraid of. In your presence, remind us that you know the way to green pastures and refreshing streams. In your presence, remind us that you see us, know us, and heal us. In your presence, remind us that you know the way to our home. Lord, we come to you this morning declaring how much we need you, how much this world needs their shepherd. Humble us, Lord, that we would turn to you quickly and teach others to do the same as well. Good Shepherd, we lift up to you our concerns for our family and our loved ones. God, you know their struggle and their pain, and you know the worries that we carry for them. We ask that you would continue to prove yourself faithful to them, as you have been to us. We lift up to you our concerns for our world. Lord, there are so many who are sick today, and so many who are missing a loved one and so many weary um, from fighting this virus. To all who need it, please give them strength, hope, and healing. We remember as well all those who are struggling financially in this economic downturn. May you sustain them and lead them to places of abundance. Lord, we lift up to you all those who have been elected to serve our our congregation as leaders and shepherds today. Give each of them wisdom to serve as you do, and strength to do the work that you have called them to do. Lastly, Lord, we remember all those who are in despair right now, for those who are overwhelmed with regret from the choices that they've made, who feel as though they will forever be a failure. Remind them of your abiding grace and love that is not earned but freely given. For those who suffer in unjustly at the hands of oppressive groups or systems. Remind them that their shepherd fights for them and protects them. And for those who feel victims of chance, who who feel as though they were dealt a bad hand in life, remind them that there is no life that is that is beyond your your redemption. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus our shepherd, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this, Lord, our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Now, friends, if you join us in singing our last hymn, I've got peace like a river. Friends, go in peace, knowing who your shepherd is, and learn to listen to his voice when you hear him call. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.